So, you want a 3D printer. You already have one, but you want another one. Yeah, that happens. Welcome to the club. So you're looking through the list of available printers, but none really catch your eye. You want something very specific, but something that won't break the bank. You reach the end of the list. Disheartened. Disappointed. But wait, you have a 3D printer and basic CAD skills. Why don't you just design and build your own printer? Well, you can. And you can do this on a shoestring budget and customize it in any way you like. Now, there are a lot of videos on YouTube and tutorials on Thingiverse and printables that show you how to do this, but we feel that they don't go into the finer points of things that much. So this video and the next few videos, this is going to be a series of videos, is going to be for the very beginners. Those of you who have never designed or built a printer before. So hope you enjoy. First up is frame and motion systems. Let's get to it. So first up, we need to know what printer we're going to build. And there's a bunch of types to choose from. But for the minute, we're just going to talk about the Cartesian bed slinger variant. And as an example, we have the Ender 3. The Ender 3 is the poster child of budget 3D printers. And the design has been copied again and again and again and again, even by Creality. So Creality came out with the Ender 3, what, 2017, 2018, something like that. And there's been a million different iterations just by Creality themselves as well. So we had the Ender 3. This is the original Ender 3, a little bit modified. Then we had the Ender 3 Pro. Then we had the Ender 3 V2. Then we have the Ender 3 S1 and the Pro and Plus variants. We also have the CR6, CR6 Max. And around the same time as the Ender 3, the CR10 was released. Uh, which is basically the same as the Ender, but uh, bigger with dual Z-axis. Um, that was copied all as well. There was the CR10S, the S4, the S5, the S Pro, the S Pro V2, the CR10 Smart, the Smart Pro, <laughs> the CR10 V2, and the CR10 V3. And most recently, we have the Ender 3 and Ender 3 V2 Neo printers. And that's just Creality basically using the same standard design, but modifying it slightly. And they basically all have the same motion system. In fact, they haven't really changed at all, but there's a reason for this. The reason is it's easy to build. It's easy to design. It's easy to use. There's not that much maintenance. It's a great design. It lends itself perfectly to budget style printers because of this. And it's easy to upgrade. Look at all the stuff that we've done here. The flex bed, the direct drive, the extruder, the new hot end. I mean, it's, it's super cool. I love it. But it's bland compared to all of the other printers out there because it's been copied so many times. And when, especially when you're used to 3D printers a lot, when you have seen a lot of different kinds of 3D printers, this is just the standard. It's the base model. So what is the difference between these and the newer variants that have come out, such as the Ender 3 S1, well, flex bed, BL touch, or CR touch in this case, um, all metal hot end direct drive. There's been no changes to the motion system at all, unless you include the stepper drivers, but that's an electronics thing. We'll get to that eventually. There's been no change. They basically all have the print speed. All of the printers I mentioned have around the same print speed. It's an easy design, but it's been copied so much and it's bland now. So what is this magical motion system that has been used in 3D printing for the last million years? Well, it's a Cartesian belt driven system with roller bearings for traction. And what do I mean when I say Cartesian? Well, I mean that there is a movement in each plane of a three-dimensional plot. So there's a movement on the X axis, left and right. There's a movement on the Y axis, back and forth. And there's a movement on the Z axis, up and down. With the Creality printers that I mentioned, motion is controlled by these guys. These are roller bearings. It's basically just a bit of hard rubber on a ball bearing and they scoot around on an aluminum frame like so. These have uh, V-slot grooves that fit right into these kind of aluminum profiles. Now, the great thing about these is that they are cheap. These are really cheap, cheap as chips. So they're super for using on budget printers. But what's cool about them is they don't require super high precision because these are tightened against the aluminum frame with a eccentric nut on most of these systems. So as mentioned before, these roller bearings fit in nicely to these V-slot aluminum profiles. And these are also really great because they are light and they're rigid and they're cheap and they lend themselves perfectly to budget printers, but also to a large format printers. 
You might have seen Ivan Veranda's videos on YouTube where he makes these monster sized 3D printers like one meter build area, really awesome stuff. For such a design, you kind of need to use these and, and, and these because if you're using a different motion system like linear rails, well, they're really, really heavy. They're made of steel, whereas this is aluminum and it's actually a lot of empty space inside. Uh, they're also really expensive. These are way, way cheaper than the linear rails. You could also use linear bearings with steel guide rods, but again, steel is kind of heavy. You also need to use two of those to make it work perfectly. And that length of a steel rod might cause a bit of flex and vibration, and that's not really, really good for breaking. An Ender 3's frame is made out of eight different aluminium profiles. There's a 2020 profile here and here, two 2040 profiles here, and the thick 4040 profiles at the bottom. You want the thickest ones at the bottom because it needs to be rigid and it needs to keep the center of gravity very low, otherwise vibrations will occur. So it's really important that you get the right profiles for your printer. You don't really need to have 2040 profiles all over the whole thing. For lighter parts like the X carriage, it's advisable to have a 2020 profile. And for the top, of course, a 2020 profile is okay because you just need to connect the columns, that's it. But the base should always be quite thick, as should the columns as well. All of the profiles on an Ender 3 are V-style profiles. They fit in perfectly with these bearings. But you can also get profiles that do not have a V-style system. So for instance, these ones, these are just not really compatible with the bearings. They just won't grip and they won't work that well. These are more suited for linear rails or linear uh, bearings if, if that's what you're going to go for. So be sure you get the right ones. If you're aiming for a system with roller bearings, then make sure you get these slot profiles. Aluminium profiles also have an internal bore. So for instance, on the ender here, there is a five millimeter round internal bore, which can be easily threaded with a tap and die set. Easy to find on the internet, quite cheap, easy to use as well. So if you are intending on attaching the profiles to another with a thread, this is a perfect use. But if, for instance, you get a profile that does not have a round bore, for instance, this one has a square bore, then you need to have a different solution. And this is where these corner brackets come in. And you can buy these at a hardware store as well. They're really, really cheap. And they fit in perfectly to the grooves on the profiles because they use these little square notes. And the Ender actually uses square notes already. So with the motor mounts and the spool holder, these are square notes. So it's really useful. If you don't want to use a tap and die set, you can also just use these square notes. The motion system on Ender 3s and actually pretty much every 3D printer is controlled by pulleys and belts. Now these can differ a bit. So for instance, with the Ender 3, uh, this has a 2GT belt, but you might also see GT2 belts, which is stupidly confusing. But these are basically the same thing, except that the tooth profile is of a different shape. Uh, the fact that it says two refers to the two millimeter pitch on the tooth profile. So it doesn't really matter which belt you get, two GT or GT2, but that just has to line up well with the pulleys and the eiders that you're also using. Belts are made out of rubber or polyurethane with a steel wire skeleton, or I have seen some with a fiberglass skeleton for reinforcement. The size of the belt you need will depend obviously on the print area, but also how it's going to be distributed. So for the Ender 3, for instance, you need a belt for the Y axis that is not a continuous loop because it goes all the way through the aluminum profile. It doesn't go over and under like on the X axis. I would always recommend buying a belt that is not a continuous loop because you can always attach and stretch it with a printed part anyway. That's the basic intro to bed slingers, but of course there are other Cartesian printers like the Ender 5, which doesn't have a bed that goes back and forth in the Y axis. In this case, the bed is controlled by the Z axis. So this is advantageous because beds can be heavy and they generally need to have a six millimeter plate of aluminum. And in the case where you have a bed that has a glass surface, they get really, really heavy. So putting all of the weight on the Z axis, which only controls layer changes and Z hops, is quite advantageous to speed and stability. If you're gonna build a Cartesian printer, then I would actually recommend the box style. So keeping the, the weight off the bed is really advantageous, but because of the box design, the aluminum profiles are a lot thinner. So the tops are 2020s, the columns are 2040s, but the base is just regular 2020s, which is really cool. The other difference between the Ender 5 and other Cartesians like the Ender 3 is that the Z axis doesn't have these roller bearings. It actually has these steel rods with linear bearings. 
The rest of the system though is normal V-stock grooves. By the way, do not buy steel rods for these in a hardware store. The ones that we use, these are eight millimeter precision manufactured stainless steel chromed rods. They are actually eight millimeters, but the ones that you would get in a hardware store are eight millimeters. They vary a bit in their diameter. So if you try to put linear bearings on those, it will just shred the bearing and you have ball bearings everywhere. It's not pretty. One last note about the Ender 5 is that it has a single motor for the Z axis. And this is fine with uh, something as small as an Ender 5. It's anything that's under 250 millimeters is totally fine. But if you're having a larger bed, then I would recommend dual Z motors on the sides with at least four steel rods with linear bearings to keep everything straight because it will sag if there's only motors and support on one side. That is essentially all you need to know about Cartesian printers. Would I want to design and build one? Well, no, not really. Like I said before, there are a million variations of Cartesian printers and you can find lots of designs online, but we want something a little more exciting. So we've done Cartesians. What other choice do we have? Well, what about Delta printers? Now, Delta printers are pretty cool. They use three motors in tandem to move on the X, Y, and Z axis. And this is really cool because there's more stability and higher speed. You can go from 100 millimeters per second to 400 millimeters per second on some Delta printers. Very cool, but they're a bit complicated. Remember with Cartesian printers, a lot of these parts are shared with CNC machines and laser engravers and other devices. So you have a lot more choice when buying parts for those rather than a Delta machine. Lastly, we have Core XY printers. And these are kind of like Deltas because the X and the Y motors work in tandem, hence the name. This offers greater speed and stability. Now Core XYs are becoming more and more popular, but the market is still dominated by Cartesians when it comes to budget printers. So can we make a budget Core XY printer? Let's find out. So first of all, let's just explain what a Core XY machine actually is. So I've created a little mock-up here and you can see everything from a top-down perspective. As you can see, there are two motors and there are two belts, one black, one white. So you can see that there are two belts, but they are actually connected in the middle of the X carriage. So if I turn one motor clockwise, it goes diagonally. If I turn the other motor anti-clockwise, it goes diagonally in the other direction. If I turn both motors clockwise, it goes in the X direction, and both motors anti-clockwise, it goes in the other X direction. And if I turn both motors in different directions, it goes forward. And if I turn both motors in other directions, the other way around, it goes back. It's really marvelous to see actually how this system works. The actual components are mostly 3D printed and connected via screws and T-nuts. Each motor and belt system are on two different elevations. This is really simple to do. We just use an upright pulley and an inverted pulley. One side of the elevated belt is fed around the gear and then connects with the carriage here. We use the gear here to grip on the belt teeth, but where on the side where the belt is smooth, we have just used ball bearings. The pulleys and bearings all have five millimeter inner diameters. So we have used M5 screws screwed into M5 threaded inserts. These are hot set using a soldering iron and are quite strong. The other belt, the non-elevated one, follows a similar pattern and joins with the carriage on the other side. When placing belts, it is very important that there is enough vertical height for where the belts run under and above each other. If they rub against each other, they will eventually wear down and also cause issues with movement. So make sure there is enough space here. So we actually made a few mistakes with our mock-up here. Uh, the most crucial of which is the X carriage here. This sits way, way too high compared to where the belts are around the perimeter. So that needs to be changed. The other issue is that these motor mounts need to be offset slightly because the belts on the perimeter here are rubbing against the printed parts. Not good. And the other thing is that these idler mounts, they need to be increased in height as well because the belts are just a little bit too close to each other. I don't like that. So this needs to be fixed before we can put it into action. As you can see here, we're not using roller bearings. I mean, of, of course we're not. We're aiming for a fast printer, but we could actually use linear bearings because they're way, way cheaper, way cheaper than linear rails. So let's do that. Let's make a small, very budget conscious printer and also a larger, less budget conscious printer. We'll go through all the points with you. And at the end, you'll know how to get started with your own design, or if you want, just use our design. So in terms of design, linear rails are actually a lot more compact and minimalist than linear bearings. 
So for instance, here with the rail, we can actually attach these with screws and t nuts to the aluminum profiles. We can't do that with linear bearings. The steel rods need to have a printed part to attach that to the aluminum profiles. And the issue with linear bearings is that we need two rods. So it complicates things even more. The reason we need two rods is because we're using a linear bearing, it will just rotate around the rod and you need something to keep it stationary as it's moving along the X axis. Uh, one last thing is the filament choice for the printed parts that you're gonna use. Now you can use ABS. I would recommend ABS because it's quite strong. It's a little bit flexible, but it's, it's cheap as well. Uh, I would really, really not recommend using PLA. It's, it's brittle, even 100% infill, it's not a great choice. If you don't wanna use ABS though, you can also use PCTG or PETG, but I think ABS would be best. Although for this model, I've actually decided to go for PETG carbon fiber. It's really strong, really rigid, and it has this really nice matte texture. So this is, this is more just a personal choice. You can totally use ABS, it's much cheaper too. So that's the goal with our small printer. We're gonna make a little one that's very, very budget conscious, uh, but it's small, compact, it, it's gonna be a good printer, but I want it to be really small. I wanna put it on my desk next to my computer. So have a frame that's only 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters maximum. And you might've noticed that we didn't create a frame for this printer. Uh, yep, we did one for the, the larger Core XY machine, but the reason for this is because I want to print the frame. It's a bit controversial. This isn't anything new, by the way. There's been lots of printers that have 3D printed frames. One of the first that, that I know of anyway was the Tantalus. If you guys are familiar with this, it's from 2013, I think, part of the RepRap project. It had a printed frame and I don't want to copy this because it's 10 years old. It's, it's old. It does not have modern technology. I want to have a nice hot end, a nice extruder and all of the, the pleasant features that we know and love today. I can't believe I'm saying modern technology for something that happened 10 years ago and I'm using it without hyperbole. So we're gonna make two printers. One, very budget conscious, very compact. The other, less budget conscious, much bigger. So with the first one, we're gonna have a printed frame, no aluminum profiles, linear guide bearings for motion, and all of that will be attached to the frame and integrated into the frame using screws and threaded inserts. With the larger printer, we're gonna use linear rails and aluminum profiles, and it's gonna be considerably bigger. So in the next video, we're gonna be talking about the extruders, the hot ends, and the heated bed. And in a future video, we'll talk about the firmware and the main board and all of the other electronics. So it should be really cool. At the end, we'll have files and STLs for you to download if you want to create one of these printers. But the goal of this video series is going to be on educating you on how to make your own. So if you want to make your own design, we hope that you'll be able to learn something from what we've done and apply it to your own design, which would be really cool. We'd love to see what you can build. But if you're not interested in building your own printer and just want to buy one, then we got you covered. If you're joining us as this video is being published or maybe a few days later, then you'll know it is Black Friday week and we're doing a up to 30% off Black Friday sale from the 18th to the 27th of November. Some of the printers that are on sale and up to 30% off include the CR5 Pro High Temp, the Ming the Magician Pro and the Ming the Magician Max, the Ender 6, the Sermon V1 Pro, the Ender 5 Pro, the Ender 3 S1, the Ender 3 V2, the Mars 2 Pro, the Photon Mono 4K, the Ender 3 Neo, the Artillery Hornet, and the Ender 3 original version. <sighs> Good. If you feel we missed out on something talking about the frames and motion systems of different printers, then let us know in the comments below and we can discuss that in the next video. Hope to see you guys next time. Later. Thank <laughs> you.